Misplacing personal items, forgetting appointments, or missing minor details in conversations are all considered acceptable mistakes in our daily lives. However, when it comes to law enforcement, arresting the wrong person is a much more serious matter, one that can have lasting consequences. Here are five times when cops realized they arrested the wrong person. Number 5. Cane mix-up leads to arrest of blind man. An elderly man, navigating the streets with what appears to be a peculiar stride, catches the attention of local law enforcement. His back pocket holds an object, the nature of which is about to spiral into a series of misunderstandings. Officers on patrol, trained to spot irregularities and potential threats, notice the man and approach him for a casual inquiry. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking in. The navigational aids. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Yeah, I am actually. What's your name and date? The object of their concern seems ominous, so they decide to investigate further. Date of birth. I don't have to give that unless yes, I'm Yes, sir. Doing. I was investigating. You have reasonable Do you want me to put suspicion? you in handcuffs right now? Yes, sir, I do. What is your suspicion? It looks like you're carrying a gun in your back. As the officers engage with the man, their initial questions are simple, aiming to understand what the man carries. The man, on his part, is puzzled by the sudden interest in his possessions. To make sure you're carrying it properly, you well, don't have, have you to... ensured that it's not a firearm? No, you keep turning so I can't see it. You don't have to be a dick to me. Well, you're being one to me. No, sir. The conversation takes a turn when the officers, driven by their concern for a concealed weapon, come to a decision. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? It does not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put you in He's please. right here. All right. It's not a lighthearted move, but for the police, it comes from a place of responsibility. The man, bewildered by the turn of events, finds himself in a situation far removed from his mundane stroll. Don't you know? Sir, what's the stop you for? For a walking stick. So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really present it, okay? And now she's asking me. Frustrated by the inconvenience and the misunderstanding, the man tries to assert his innocence. He Okay. I don't need the ID unless okay. there's reasonable, articulated suspicion and her, that I have committed a crime and committing a crime and or her, about to do a crime. Sir. The officers, firm in their resolve, believe they're averting a potential threat. Was that you were armed, okay, and she's asking you for your ID. Well, now right. she has verified that I am not armed, okay. so there is no you problem. you have your ID or not? I do have my ID, okay. but you don't need it. Caught in a situation that seems more like a mix-up than anything else, an innocent man finds himself treated like a criminal. It's a bit of a head-scratcher, really. The officers, thinking they're doing the right thing, follow their protocol in situations like these. I don't have my wallet on me. Okay, where's your ID? Where's your ID? My pocket. Which pocket? You are not allowed to search me. The man's pretty adamant that they're barking up the wrong tree, insisting they shouldn't be searching him in the first place. Then, a bit of progress. The cops find what they're looking for. This pocket. You'd think that would clear things up, but the man's still not happy. He hints that he'll be taking legal action. Thank you. I want your names and badge numbers. 1257 on Nick 654-27. Yeah, the man, still under the watchful eyes of the officers, explains his situation. Sir, are you legally bond? Yes, I am. Okay. I had to walk up here and... His journey to the location was not out of ordinary business, but a civic duty. Dark. For jury duty, which was canceled. Why aren't you using your stick? You don't have to use your stick all the time? Not all the time. Talk about a rough day getting rougher. Despite the circumstances, the officers stand by their decision. Was that that hard? It's gonna be. I want your name and your badge number. You know what? Put him in jail for resisting. Okay. Alright, let's go. Heading to the patrol car, the man, though keeping his cool, is still shaking his head in disbelief. Your name and badge number two, sir. Have a seat. You want to pick my property up, please? I sure will. After you have a seat. As the encounter comes to a close, the man is prepared to be transported to jail, 
despite being innocent. Pull this out of my back pocket. Sure. Here, I'll grab your jacket for you too. Isn't it confusing? How could a disabled, innocent, and law-abiding citizen end up in jail? Thankfully, the officers who put him there got demoted and suspended. Number four, police mistake bird poop in athlete's car for an illegal substance. A man driving with his emergency flashers on catches the attention of a local deputy. The man, aware of his surroundings, opts to drive to a well-lit area before pulling over, a decision that sparks the first thread of tension in this nighttime encounter. Finally, the man complies with the deputy's request. Step out. Well, step out for me, man. Step out for me. Can I reach for my seat step, up? Yeah, step out. With a tone of authority, the officer signals that the situation is more serious than a simple traffic violation. You're kind of pissing me off right now because you know what you're doing. You're a grown man. You're on the main highway coming in Saluda County from Newberry. I'm not from Newberry. I'm coming from Clinton. You're, you're almost... The man, trying to stay calm, explains his actions. The lady on the phone. It doesn't matter. I don't care. You, we, we've been riding for 10 I, minutes I'm now. Not, sir, my mama told me not to pull over. Mm -hmm. no. The turning point of this encounter comes when the deputy's gaze falls upon the hood of the man's car. Oh, you can see it on the windshield. That's not bird poop. I swear to God, that's bird doo, -doo. That's not bird poop. I, I swear, I swear that's to a God. Lot of bird, that's a lot of bird man. The man insists it's just bird poop, perhaps a result of parking under a tree. The deputy, now joined by other officers, decides to test the substance. Turn pink, man. <laughs> In the world of law enforcement, this color change signals the presence of an illegal substance. I got me one of the uh, field test kits and I uh, wiped it and it's come and my, my little field test kit is turning pink. The officers, surprised by the result, find themselves at a crossroads of judgment and doubt. As the situation escalates, the man's identity comes to light. He's a student athlete. He's, he's, uh, he's got like a Georgia Southern, I, I reckon he plays for Georgia Southern. Um, he's got a search of the man's trunk reveals nothing more incriminating than a Blue Yeti cooler, a common accessory for an athlete. The night progresses, and the man is prepared to be transported to jail. All right, man, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? I'm going to read you your rights, all right? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, it won't be provided for you. Despite the mix-up, the man remains composed. His response is measured and his demeanor calm. To the public defender's office. Do you understand your rights? Mm-hmm. Okay. You wish to seek anything any further? No. No? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do right now. But the deputy's mind is made up. The test kit's pink hue is undeniable evidence in his eyes. Right now, I'm going to gather up all this stuff on the front as much as I can. It, it tests positive. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I have no reason to lie about like, I play football, so I don't do co From a simple night drive to an unexpected journey of suspicion and misunderstanding, the quarterback finds himself in a local jail cell. However, the athlete's lawyer, Towns Jones IV, reveals that more sophisticated lab testing proved the substance was not illegal resulting in the charge being dropped. Number three, mechanic arrested after failing to provide ID. Two men engrossed in repairing a car catch the attention of a passing police officer. The mechanic, Roland Edgar, and his stepson, Justin Newby, are knee-deep in their work, unaware of the impending trouble heading their way. The officer, curious and vigilant, approaches them casually, aiming to understand their presence in the lot. How you doing? What are y'all doing? I'm the second description. Huh? What are y'all doing? Get in the car. Is this your car? The initial exchange is simple. A routine check, perhaps. Edgar, the mechanic, is quick to clarify the situation. One of your customers? I was over here earlier. Pointing out the cars they're attending to. Whose car is that? That's mine. The black one? Yeah. Things take a turn when the officer requests identification. Take a break from me real fast and y'all have driver's license or IDs on you. I ain't gonna submit to no ID. Listen, you call me right now. Listen, I ain't gonna talk to this stupid old boy. I don't mean to be meat rude. It's a standard procedure, perhaps, but Edgar is hesitant to oblige the officer's request. You do need to give me your ID no, or driver's license. 
Listen, I don't want you to run run me in and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you refusing me to give? Are you refusing I'm, to give me your ID? Your you. Time, as always, is of the essence, and Edgar is agitated over being caught in an unnecessary delay. Unfortunately, the refusal to hand over his ID doesn't end well for Edgar. He owns, owns, owns this Step car. over that one. Come on, man. See y'all. See here's y'all playing. You're playing right now. We, we, don't, we don't got time for this. We really don't. What starts as a routine check escalates quickly. Edgar's disbelief is clear. Why such an extreme step for something so minor? This is you. Man, y'all don't understand. You don't understand the law. I do. I do. I got three officers. Three officers. Unfortunately, his complaints fall on deaf ears. To my left when I asked you, sir. All right, I'm going to undo your cuff yeah, and you twist yeah, your wrist yes, around. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm going to give you my ID. I have my pocket. Hi, man. The officer clarifies the reason for his arrest. Under arrest for what? obstruction. I didn't do nothing. All right, so if you resist any further, on, you will also get charged with resisting arrest. Listen, you understand? Listen, I'll give you my ID. I'll tell you what's going on. It just seems so unfair. It's hard to believe how things have taken a turn for the worse for him. The dialogue between Edgar and the officers is a dance of frustration and urgency. I'm trying to get a customer's car here. I'm in a rush. They, my shop's unlocked over on Governor's Drive right now. Man. Edgar's disbelief is evident. Where's your ID? It's in the car, I'm sure. I thought it was in my pocket. You're all down in my pocket for no reason. I, I said my ID is, either, is in my car. Go over and walk in and get my car. Okay, well, car. An arrest for obstruction for what he sees as doing nothing wrong seems absurd. The search continues and the officers are thorough in their duty, leaving no stone unturned. I don't know what's in them, all right? And you're not going to get placed in my car without knowing what's in your pocket. Now 47, code one. The tension peaks when Edgar is admonished to silence. Is that how you talk to someone? Is that all officer supposed to talk to someone Yeah, like we're here doing a custodial I, I, search on you. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What y'all need to do? Is this the norm, he wonders, the way officers engage with those they're sworn to protect? Right there in this office right here, hand me the key. That's I already to explained do. to you, all right. Oh, man, I am such a rush. How long has it been, man? I've been trying to get over and get this call all day. As Edgar is led to the patrol car, the reality of the situation sinks in. This ain't necessary. This ain't necessary. You it is necessary. You I called what? obstruction. I tell you, listen, I didn't do anything. I Edgar's protests and his insistence on his innocence paint a vivid picture of a man caught in a web of procedure and misunderstanding. Yes, yes please he listen. Is. I've please. already told him that he's under arrest. This is ridiculous, man. You know what I'm saying? She, 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 hey, look here. I didn't do a crime, but she's trying to arrest somebody for not doing a crime. She's trying to arrest me for obstruction. The narrative continues. Edgar's frustration boiling over. For what? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Huh? That's what I'm saying. She's down. I mean, listen. The charge of obstruction feels like a heavy mantle for something so trivial. Please listen. Sit down. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. I got my shop unlocked over there. I'm trying to confide. Man. Please listen to me. His repeated declarations of innocence are flat out ignored by the officers. Please listen. No, you don't want to listen to us. I'm so trying to explain to, to you. I'm, I'm sir. I'm, I'm trying to explain. Stay. The officers, steadfast in their duty, appear unmoved by his pleas. Just to fill you in on what happened after, the city dropped the obstruction charge against Edgar, and he proceeded to file a lawsuit in federal district court. However, the suit was ultimately dismissed after the court determined that the officers were protected by qualified immunity. Number 2. Black Panther Director Accused of Bank Robbery Ryan Coogler, the acclaimed director of Black Panther, finds himself in an unexpected and bewildering situation. A routine banking transaction morphs into a police operation when he discreetly attempts to withdraw a large sum of money with a note. The bank's staff, misinterpreting Kugler's intentions, suspect a robbery might be underway. We just got a call, and uh, from what we got the call, it seemed like someone was trying to rob the bank. Uh, something about you passing a note to the teller, something to that effect. The situation escalates quickly, and before he knows it, Kugler finds himself surrounded by police officers. I mean, what's going on? Or... Yeah, bro. I... It's a, it's a medical assistant that works in my house that prefers me paying cash. 
Kugler is bewildered, struggling to comprehend how a simple bank withdrawal has led to this moment. He explains his side of the story. Every time I make a withdrawal to pay her, you know, because it's a, a large amount, she writes a lot. Yeah. You know, if I if I don't if I don't write down on detailing the reason for his cash withdrawal and the note to the teller. How much I went out, and then I don't want it ran through the money counter right there at the desk. The whole bank ends up looking at me because they just hearing money going through the money through the account. He's detained, handcuffed. I, I, I don't. So you you make on. you make well that's like I said that's the reason why we're out here and that's the reason why we detained everybody because we didn't know exactly what was going on and left feeling vulnerable and frustrated. Officer, let me ask you a question, sir. Yes, sir. You're talking to me right now, and I'm cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. My team's and drivers cuffed. Yeah. So I imagine in the back of the car. Yeah. And and and. and, and I'm Adding to his distress is the fact that his family's baby nurse, a woman who is with him, is also detained. Baby nurse that takes care of my baby is cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. Is there any reason we can't have this conversation once you get these cuffs off everybody? And we, yeah. And we, and we back to being cheated like yeah, yeah. standing nurse yeah. society. She's an innocent bystander in this confusion, her only connection to the situation being her presence with Kugler at the wrong time. The officers, now understanding Kugler's perspective, agree to remove the handcuffs. Bro. Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get you out of the handcuffs. I mean, and get I'd love to have this conversation with you, man. But I this, got you. This is, this is, uh, I understand. <clears throat> we, we just... Uh, I, I want... Trained to respond swiftly to potential threats, the officers begin to see the misunderstanding for what it is. We don't come out. Because of the seriousness of the call, we don't just come out. And unfortunately, in a situation like that, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. We detain and then we ask questions later. They acknowledge the need for a dialogue recognizing that the situation could have been handled differently with more information. So that's why we come out with weapons, that's why you're detained, and then we ask questions later because of the nature of the call. So, um... Rock. Sit again, sir. As the handcuffs unlock, there's a sense of relief, but Kugler's frustration still hasn't simmered down. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing for me to, for me to say, man. Like, I, gotta, I gotta get all your names. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not fine. a problem. Um, got, got no. He's been put in a position where he had to defend his everyday actions, actions that were misunderstood and led to an unwarranted response. Like I just came in Brian had guns on me in the wall, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my own money out of my own account. You know, you know what I mean? The baby nurse, equally innocent, finds herself caught in this bewildering situation, her day taking a turn she could never have anticipated. Did they can have a seat in the car. Yeah, she can go back. Oh, you have the keys, Pat? Oh, okay, you can give her the keys. It's a major problem, man. In the, in the office. Kugler, still trying to process the events, expresses his frustration at not being asked for his side of the story from the outset. I gave him a bank card. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I, 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 do, I, do, do, do you understand where we're coming from? Do you understand yeah. that we're not, we didn't just show up here? And put... He points out that a simple conversation could have prevented the escalation. We showed up because the call was, uh, came in. I, 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 I understand yeah. that somebody fucking Yeah. That's all I know right now, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. As the event unfolds, the officer recognizes the need for clarity and transparency. Hey, uh, y'all do me a favor and give it, uh, write down all our names so, so, and put it on a paper know. form. He don't have nothing to write on. Okay. Just put all of us. Well, I've had guns going, take money on my own account. The conversation then shifts towards the man's banking practices with an officer posing a question that perhaps many would find themselves contemplating in hindsight. Have you ever considered speaking to them before you make a transaction like that? Have you ever had something like this happen? Have I ever been arrested? No. no, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, what? Listen. In response, Kugler clarifies his actions. I'm not here, bro. Like, I'm not saying out loud how much money I'm taking. That's, That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not talking no, about no. speaking to somebody like that. I'm saying, no, no, hey, no. can I speak it's, to it's, a manager and an officer? emphasizing the routine nature of his transactions at various banks. To this point, every Bank of America I've ever gone to, never happened. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I understand. So, so, so y'all explaining y'all perspective, right? Yeah. Y'all the ones with guns and vests. Further elaborating on his experience, Kugler recounts his interaction with a bank teller. She never said it was a bro. Yeah. Like I, like I, 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 I said, hey, is that going to be okay with you? She said, yeah. I put my own car in. Put my own pen in. She asked. However, the normalcy of this interaction is shattered when the director explains the following scenario. I, I hear 
Glocks. Yeah. I hear Glocks getting hear pulled it. out. That's what I hear. I hear Glocks getting pulled out from unholstering. Hey, sir, can I talk to you for a minute? You understand what I'm saying? As the situation de escalates, the officers return Kugler's belongings. Someone's been holding anything. Wow. Well, do we have any more of their property? Yeah, right here. Give, it, give them all their property. No one's been holding anything from yeah, you. No one. Can, can, can I just. And make sure to provide him with all the information he needs. We're oh, giving you the problem. case number. Don't no calm down. Oh, yeah. It's not a problem. Can you tell me to calm down? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. Officer. We're giving you a case number that identifies every single person that was out. Kugler verifies the information and seeks reassurance that the encounter will not be lost in the anonymity of the system. Oh, so you got a very common last name. Fernanda? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to call the officer. I'm going to call Metro Atlanta and say Officer Fernandez. And they probably got more than one. I got you. That's all I'm saying. Okay. The cop confirms their transparency with the director. All right, well, we're going to give you everything that's associated Thank with this call. Thank Everyone's recording. There's no question about what happened. All right? The revelation of the teller's account to the officers brings a moment of disbelief. You said that you weren't speaking to her. And that's and I'm just telling you what she what she said. She got she got look, man. She got the idea that a simple note could trigger such fear agitates Kugler. Dude handed her a note. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say to that. Yeah, I don't know what to say to that either. I mean, that... wasn't speaking to her. Hey, bro, I asked her if she could... The officer, now beginning to understand the situation clearly, agrees with Kugler's sentiments. Take care of my ID. You know what I'm saying? I'm always talking to her the whole time, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? If she was scared, she got to admit that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I agree. And that's, and that's, As the situation de-escalates, there's a collective acknowledgement of the misunderstanding. Kugler, once a suspect, is now seen for what he was all along, a person carrying out a routine task. Number 1. Clueless jogger wrongfully detained for matching burglar's description. Clad in a white tank top and black shorts, a guy enjoys his morning jog completely unaware that cops nearby are searching for someone who bears a striking resemblance to him. As fate would have it, their paths crossed. Hey, buddy. If you're not in any trouble or anything, huh? there is a, a burglary that happened. You kind of fit the description. The jogger, surprised but cooperative, listens as the officer outlines the reasons for their encounter. Make, really? Let me just make sure that you're not him, okay? All right? Um, I'm a vet. I have my ID. Okay. Can I see your ID? Yeah. He, you literally, they said white tank. The jogger, though taken aback, remains composed, understanding the gravity of the situation, yet confident in his innocence. And they they said that you had a beard. All right. So I'm not saying it's you, but it was a black male. Again, I'm not saying it's you, buddy. The cop chatters away on his radio, filling his colleagues in about the situation. Got a male over here sitting with right now on 2000 block of North Normandy fitting the description. I'm verifying him right now to make sure it's not him. And describing the man's appearance. Wearing an army, black shorts, white tank top, beard. So just verifying it's not him. The officer, adhering to protocol, relays the sergeant's decision to the jogger. All right, buddy. Listen, just bear with me, okay? Because you fit the description, I'm not saying you're guilty, but my sergeant's telling me to detain you. That's that's my sergeant. Despite being caught between a rock and a hard place... I just had a daughter born two days ago, so I just have this on live. It is live? I'm not do you mind? Do you mind sending it down here? Yeah. Okay? Look, I, I, I'll, I'll place it for you, okay? Right. Just for now. The jogger continues to be cooperative with the officer. Detain you? Look, you're not, you're, you're, you're not under arrest. I'm detaining you right now because you fit the description, okay? okay. Just hang tight for me, okay, buddy? With a friendly demeanor and a few well-placed words, the officer seeks to ease the jogger's nerves, understanding the apprehension that can arise in such situations. Arrest. It's just that you fit the description. They're going to verify for me. Look, look, I even, I even put you where, look, okay? Right. Y'all better up. raise hell. Yep. And by the way... The jogger makes a conscious effort to remain composed, drawing on his inner resolve to navigate the unexpected encounter with poise. 5-2, I, I even got recorded. Is this...
Suddenly, what began as a routine morning jog transforms into an unforeseen chapter in the jogger's day as he finds himself unwittingly thrust into a law enforcement verification process. You're not, in, you're not, we're not saying it's you, but you fit the description. That's why I'm detaining you. If, if it's not you, we're going to cut you loose and you're free to go, okay? But I just want you to see through us. The situation, though serious, is handled with a level of respect and understanding. Reflecting the officer's commitment to justice and the jogger's patience. You know me. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take care of you. Relax. I got you, buddy. I got you. Relax. My wife's going to be shitting herself. <laughs> As they await the verification of the suspect's identity, a sense of camaraderie builds between the jogger and the officers. Uh, 522 South Annapolis Jog. It's a couple blocks from here. Five minute jog. Yeah. Okay. And that's all you were doing was jogging, obviously. The police officer takes a moment to reiterate the striking similarities between the suspect's description and the jogger's appearance. Literally, you fit the description. Black with a beard, a white shirt, black, white, white tank white top. <laughs> Orange, uh, black shorts, black shoes. I don't know about you, but isn't it impressive to still see the man smiling despite being in cuffs for a crime he didn't commit? Wrong place, wrong time, man. Hey. That's what I was telling him, literally. If, if, if he's free to go, if he's not the one, we'll cut him loose. While many might succumb to frustration or anger when wrongly accused, he embodies patience and understanding remaining calm and composed amidst adversity. Uh, the good news is they come off as easy as they go on, so. That's it, and I apologize for the inconvenience. Isn't it crazy how this guy matches the exact description of some unidentified suspect? We're home, right? We'd be doing the same. Unfortunately, you, you literally fit the description like 99%, so. You might just have to be that 1% that Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Definitely not his lucky day. This is a little bit scary. Yep. Now you're gonna... <laughs> this is a bur it was a burglary. Right, don't pull it's, me over. it's a burglary. It's you're serious. It's not a joke. <laughs> yep. We don't know that for sure, though. You know what I mean? See, that's what... The cops are doing their best to help him see where they're coming from and how serious the situation is. Us. See it through our eyes. Yeah. The car is burned. The officer is shit tank. That's the only reason. So you got these guys that are getting ready to go home and we're coming in. So that's why you have It's a good thing that this innocent man chose to compose himself and extend his patience. We're getting picked about the worst time they could possibly do it because there's about 30 of us right here in the city of the Bellatona right now. So. Nothing going to happen to you. I'm going to take care of you. I promise you that. As the investigation unfolds. It was him. He, he's hiding out somewhere. <laughs> what, what was the last place? Uh, they said. They got him coming east. Up up east? There's a noticeable change in the officer's demeanor, shifting from suspicion to reassurance. They acknowledge the jogger's upbeat attitude despite the unfortunate coincidence. Being very cooperative. Other people would have would just I'm not trying mm. to get a shot over this. You ain't gonna get <laughs> Listen, there's there's some, there's some mistakes people recognizing his positive outlook amidst the confusion. Continuing their conversation with the jogger as they await further information. It's because of their actions. I'm not saying that Officers that have been in, in involved shootings weren't at fault as well, but... The officers commend his cooperation, appreciating his willingness to assist in resolving the situation amicably. The exchange between the jogger and the officers remains calm and respectful, showcasing their mutual appreciation for each other's positions. I, I've been in the same boat, okay? I know things are going on. It's a, it's a race fight going on. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. The jogger gives honest opinions on the matter. Top, white, black shorts, yes he would. Same thing. It wouldn't have changed the story. In response, the officer clarifies any misconception. If it, if it would have been a white male, white tank top, black shorts, black shoes, we would have stopped the same person that figured that if you were, if you, let's say you were white, you were running down, the same thing would have happened and assures the jogger that their actions are impartial and based solely on the facts. That's what I'm trying to do, man. Let's avoid that race car because it ain't here. I promise you that. I promise you that. The officer remains focused on the task at hand, 
determined to see the investigation through. Up, right, in case it ain't him. We cut him loose. All right, I just want to make sure, man, because I want to catch him. All the while showing consideration for the man in their custody. No, you're fine. You're comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Even as bystanders gather, their curiosity piqued by the unfolding scene. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. You're obstructing traffic. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep on going. The officer maintains a professional demeanor. The officer expresses his disbelief at the circumstances. I understand. Causing a rose hazard. Then we got an accident. Yet, it's commendable that the jogger refrains from reacting impulsively and instead maintains his composure. Yeah, they, they just get so, they just watch the blue lights and then they're like, oh, and then they crash. And... While they wait for further updates, the officer seizes the opportunity to dig deeper into the jogger's personal life, asking more questions to pass the time. In the military. Uh, military police. Medic, nurse, the whole nine yards, huh? Good for you. Good for you. When'd you go in? Surprisingly, the man willingly engages in conversation, perhaps eager for any distraction from the tension at the moment. 2010. How long are you going to serve? Uh, I just ETS this month. Okay. I don't know how the whole thing works, so that's why I'm asking. Then, as if a light bulb suddenly switches on, the moment of realization arrives. The, the witness is saying that it, the clothes you're wearing and all that doesn't fit the description. Yeah, it's called, we, it, it's called a The officers shared the long-awaited good news with the jogger, relief evident in their expressions. Fine, buddy, you're, you'll be out of here, okay? Cool. All right. So, look. Hey, can one of y'all uh, tell my mean? girl to come pick me up off of Normandy, please? Yeah. Unless he got the baby. With the ordeal finally behind him, the jogger coordinates with the officers to arrange for his transportation home. Uh, have her mom come pick me up or something? All right, buddy. I don't want to stress I'm, out too Can much. I put it this on the yeah, floor? Just, just leave it on the All right. And finally, freedom. All right. Sorry, I'm coming. With sincerity and genuine remorse, apologies are extended to the jogger. Appreciate you being very cooperative. Again, this is not a race thing, so let's not make it because yeah, that's. You know, you know what? <laughs> even if I was, I'm, let me tell you. This, this Recognizing the distress and inconvenience caused by the misunderstanding. Amazing, and there's serious consequences for racial discrimination here. Okay, I promise you that our takes <laughs> very seriously. We are not discriminating. You literally matched the description. We did a show up. The officers take a moment to explain the reason for his release. Shedding light on the investigation that has just concluded. The jogger, now relieved, displays a remarkable understanding of the situation. Demonstrating maturity and resilience as he accepts the officer's apologies with grace. Not everybody is uh, that understanding and respectful. So. Alright. Oh, thank y'all for standing with me. Uh, and thank you for Officer Estrada here. Wow. This guy deserves an award for being so cool after such a frightening ordeal. Told me from the get go, hey, I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. So I definitely appreciate that. Uh, wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> I don't think anybody could have handled the situation better than he did. As the jogger is released, a simple yet profound moment marks the conclusion of an unexpected ordeal. Have a good one, buddy. The officers, reminded of the complexities of their duties, and the jogger, once just a man on his morning run, part ways, 
each affected by the encounter. In the end, justice prevails as the real suspect is apprehended. Seeing the actual burglar, one can understand why the jogger was initially suspected. The resemblance is truly uncanny, isn't it? You be the judge. And that's a wrap. So which wrongful arrest do you think takes the cake as the biggest blunder committed by the cops in all these cases? While I've got to hand it to the jogger for keeping his cool and staying positive during the whole ordeal, I can't help but feel like it was the Black Panther director who really got the short end of the stick. What about you? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Also, check out our other stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. See you next time.